An interactive map tracking the number of coronavirus cases globally in near real time has become an important tool for researchers, health officials, and the public at large. The dashboard was created by Johns Hopkins engineering professor Lauren Gardner and her graduate student N. Shang Dong. I recently spoke with Professor Gardner about how the interactive map works and what trends they're seeing with their research. Lauren Gardner of Johns Hopkins, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Hari. Thanks so much for having me. So your site has become kind of the de facto go-to place where people find how this COVID-19 is spreading around the world. Where are you getting all that information from? This information is coming from multiple different sources uh, all over the world, depending on what country or region we're actually collecting the data for. And so in some parts of the world, we're getting this data in an automated fashion from local public health authorities that's being fed directly into our dashboard. In multiple areas, we're actually still collecting this through local media reports and then manually validating these, these data points before we enter them into the dashboard. What have you seen? I mean, you have been watching the spread of this. I mean, most people ended up starting to pay attention to this in the United States in really uh, February, perhaps, but you saw this spread starting uh, in late December, January. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we started the dashboard in, in mid-January. We've seen this outbreak grow from a local outbreak in Wuhan, in China, to a global pandemic that has now been reported in over 160 countries and regions around the world. You know, there are a couple of slides that you've sent us. Sort of describe what's in one of them. So one of the slides I sent that first looks at the global picture of what's going on is identifying the trend in cases in the countries, in the top 10 countries that are reporting the most COVID cases at the moment. And one thing to note is that China is not included in that graph because there's been, at least to date, more cases in China and they would not be shown because they'd be above the, the axis curve on that. But those cases have, have since studied off and there's actually not any new local reported cases coming out of China at the moment. Any Chinese, any cases in China are, are coming back actually from importations outside of China. What we're really seeing is a, a huge surge in cases now in multiple different countries in Europe and also in the United States. And, and so these are the trends that are happening. We've kind of seen this shift from, from east to west and so that's what's really concerning at the moment. And what about the 10 states in the U.S. where it seems to be climbing faster? So the cases are climbing in more than 10 states in the U.S. It's just on that one graph, uh, we just are sh identifying those 10 specifically. So we're seeing a surge in cases in many states in the U.S. because we're doing more reporting in the U.S. But there's a couple things to note uh, about this graph. One, it's showing total confirmed cases over time. So it's going to be increasing for every state no matter what because the cases will never, obviously, the total cases will never go down. The other thing to note is that a lot of that is actually about the testing that's currently being done. And New York has taken some pretty amazing steps recently in terms of their testing capabilities. And they're actually testing a larger percentage of the population in that state than has been done even in South Korea, China, or, or any other state in the US. And so a big reason for that surge shown is that those are positive tests, which are only possible if you're actually doing tests. So the more testing you're able to do, the faster your numbers are going to go up because we're just measuring confirmed cases. So is flattening the curve happening elsewhere in the world and how likely is that in the U.S.? Flattening the curve is definitely happening in some places around the world. It's happened in China. We've seen it happen in South Korea and I think it definitely can happen in the U.S. as well. It's just should not be expected to happen tomorrow. All right, Lauren Gardner of Johns Hopkins, thanks so much. Thank you.